And, um, you know, who's excited for the collective party after? Let's give it up for all those people that did the hard work so we could enjoy. All right. So we are in our series. Are you ready to get started? Yeah. Have a seat for a couple of minutes, and I'll let you stand when it's time to say the word, okay? All right. So we are in our series under construction, and last week Pastor Mike talked about the blueprint, right? He told us that we live by design and not by default, right? Okay. And he also challenged us that what would it look like if we took our faith more seriously? That was hard, wasn't it? Anybody with me? So he also taught us that intentional design requires intentional activation, alignment, and adjustment, that God's got a plan for us. And it doesn't always go the way we think. But we've got to adjust. We don't just throw it away, right? So we're going to continue in under construction today. Now you can stand for the reading of the word. Our word comes from Philippians 1.6, and it says, And I am sure of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your goodness and your word. I pray that we have soft hearts, that we can enjoy your truth together, and that we can enjoy this time, and we can grow together as the family of God. Just fill this room, Lord, and make it fun. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a seat. <laughs> The title of today's message is From Broken to Beautiful. And so the thing is that things that are broken need to be fixed. And that includes people. Any fixers in the room? I'm a fixer. <laughs> Guilty. I love to fix. But the thing is the people frequently don't want to be fixed. Right? And when they do, it usually means do it for me. So I'm going to share an example. My kids love to be the example. <laughs> Any parents have Power School? So Power School is the app that gives you their grades, their assignments, and their test scores, right? Moment to moment, they can't get away with anything. Oh. So one day, just recently, I get an update on one of my kids' grades, and it's going down, down, down. And it's his favorite subject, and it's gym. <laughs> How do you get a D in gym? I don't know. Well, let me tell you. My kids have to wear a uniform. They have to change, and my son didn't like changing in front of people, and I don't blame him. It's uncomfortable, right? So I said to him, "Hun, how come your grade is going down in gym. So he told me, I don't want to change in front of everybody, Mom. It's awkward. And I said, well, that's a real problem. So why didn't you say anything to me? And he said, I just wanted to figure it out myself. <laughs> and I replied, how's that going for you? <laughs> so then I have another son. And he used to ask me after school, Mom, can you help me with my homework? And I'd say, sure, I'd get all excited, pull up the chair, pull out the homework, and we'd start reading it. And he'd say, Mom, you're doing this wrong. And I'd say, it's social studies. You read the paragraph, you answer the questions, how could I be doing it wrong? And he'd say, you were supposed to ask Google. Ooh. And then I started thinking, right? I want to work with my children, but one wants to figure it out on his own, and one just wants the answers, right? Do I think of God that way? Do I go to God and say, just give me the answers when I have a problem? Or do I tell him, I just want to figure out my own life? Mm -hmm. Do I believe that God is my great fixer and that he wants to work with me? Mm. Do I believe that he is ready, willing, and able to take me from broken to beautiful? Mm. So let's look at some stories from where God take, took brokenness and moved it into something beautiful. Genesis is in, found in the first book of 
the Bible, and it gives us the story of creation. In verse 2, it tells us that God looked out and he saw that the earth was formless and void. And the word void means empty. It means an undistinguishable ruin. It was broken. And God looked out and he began to create. And when he did that, he worked for six days and then he said it was very good. He had gone from broken to beautiful. Well, during creation, he made Adam and Eve, mankind. And we made it for one whole chapter, chapter two, <laughs> while we lived in fellowship with God. And then Adam and Eve decided they wanted to figure it out for themselves. And then, you know, we invited sin into the world, death, destruction. We took the keys of the kingdom and we gave them over to the enemy and now he's available to come and steal, kill, and destroy. But God didn't leave us there. He had a solution, right? And his solution was Jesus. Salvation through Jesus is a beautiful gift, but God wants us to work with him. And when we do, he restores us and he takes us from broken to beautiful. So can we look at an individual's story? Yeah, you ready? Who loves Peter? I love Peter. So Peter is an apostle. His story is told in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And he's an ordinary guy. He's a fisherman, he's a husband, and he's a brother. And one day he has an encounter with Jesus. And he says to him, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But Jesus tells him, don't be afraid, for I'm going to make you fishers of men. You see, God's plan for Peter is that he's going to take him from ordinary to evangelist, from broken to beautiful. Let's look at some highlights of the journey. Peter is one of the 12. He has a front row seat to Jesus' teaching, to his healing. He sees deliverance. He sees Jesus forgive sin. He sees Jesus move the elements and transform nothing into provision for multiple people, right? It's beautiful, it's amazing. And one day, after all that, Peter and the apostles are out on the, store, on the, the sea, on a boat, and there's a storm. And they try to handle it on their own, and they can't. And then Jesus comes walking on the water. And Peter sees him and says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. And he does, he steps out on the water. And then he sinks, and Jesus has to lift him up. And then, later in Matthew, the church is starting to, it's getting harder walking with Jesus, and they're starting to fall away. And Peter declares, you are the Christ. And Jesus says to him, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against him. And then a few verses later, Peter is challenging Jesus, telling them that he's going to die. And he rebukes Jesus, and Jesus turns around and says, get behind me, Satan. Can you imagine, my friend, hearing that? Get behind me, Satan, after you just heard, you're Peter upon this rock, I'm gonna build my church. Whew, man, that's tough, right? And then, Peter is in the garden with Jesus. And Jesus asks him to just pray, but he falls asleep. And then the soldiers come, and he cuts this ear off of the servant, and Jesus has to fix it. And then even being warned, he denies Jesus three times. Man, that's a low point, right? He goes away in tears. But Jesus meets him in his failure. He doesn't leave him there. After his resurrection, there's women that go to his grave, and there's an angel waiting there for them. And they tell, the angel tells the women, go tell the disciples and Peter 
to come and meet me in Galilee. Well, Peter hears this, and he runs to the tomb. And then later, he goes back to fishing. And that's where Jesus meets him on the beach. Peter sees him in the distance. He doesn't wait. He jumps out of the boat, runs across, meets him in the beach, and Jesus has a conversation with him. And he tells him, asks him, Peter, do you love me? Well, now Jesus knows that Peter loves him, but something, there's something powerful about declaring things out loud, right? Saying it and making it real. Amen? And so Peter declares his love for Jesus, and then Jesus tells him, feed my sheep. And we've gone from where Peter's call started to be fishers of men to feed my sheep. This time Jesus tells him, go wait in Jerusalem for power, and Peter does it. And he goes, and he waits, and he prays, and the Holy Spirit comes, and he receives power, and he preaches the gospel message, and 3,000 people are saved, and the church is launched, and Peter has gone from broken to beautiful. Amen, right? God doesn't run from our brokenness. He delights in making us beautiful. Psalm 1819 says, His love broke open the way. He brought me into a beautiful broad place. He rescued me because his delight is in me. God doesn't run from our brokenness. He delights in making us beautiful, in transformation. But brokenness comes first, and that's our first point. God sees the void the undistinguishable ruin, and he goes to create. Adam and Eve went and hid, but God went to find them. Peter saw his own brokenness, his sinfulness, and he tried to run away, depart from me, Lord. But instead, Jesus told him, don't be afraid. And he began to work on Peter. And in my own life, I was 29 when Rob and I decided we were going to have a family. It didn't take very long for us to run into our brokenness. We were met with infertility, and it was hard and painful. And for a while, we played it off. Did you ever play off the problems in your life? Oh, it's all going to be okay. But then... You know, we went to some doctors, and things didn't work out, and it became more and more real. And so we, I had to start telling people when they would ask me, when are you going to have your, your family? And every time, every single time, they looked at me and said, what's wrong with you? And it hurt. And I began to believe that there was something wrong with me. It wasn't my fault, but yet I was broken. And so I began to believe that not only was I sad and hurt, but that I was unworthy. I felt judged. And there's two things that came from that. One, I put a period where God put a comma, and I came up with my own plan B. I was going to retire, go out and have fun. I was going to retire at 55. And I'm going to tell you something. You ready? It's in two days, and I'm not going to make it because I put a period where God had a comma. (laughs) Thank you, I love you too. (laughs) And so, here's the thing though, this is the not so funny part. I began to judge others because I felt judged. I owned that judgment and it spilled out. So we became foster parents and I can remember our first placement and I thought, I heard the story of this mom and her struggle, and, you know, I really felt God put a lot of compassion in my heart, and I knew it was him because I'm not an overly compassionate person. That's just the truth. And I began to pray for her and the struggle that she was having, and then I met the kids, and I looked at them, and I saw their pain, and I remember sitting at my kitchen table, and I looked up at God, and I said, really? Couldn't I have done better than that? 
And suddenly, I had this internal turmoil that compassion in one side and on the other side, judgment, because I had owned that in my own life. But God didn't leave me there. He met me in my brokenness. He taught me who he was. And that is our next point, too. Construction is a process. It's often messy. Peter is up and down all over the place. Up and down and up and down like the market. Do you watch the stock market? You never know where it's going to end. It's good. It's bad. That was true for me, too. I was up and I was down. Compassion, judgment, insecurity, and fear. The process took time. All of God's process took time. Creation took six days. From Adam and Eve, their mistake, to the resurrection of Jesus took over 4,000 years. Right? Peter's journey took over three. And from the day Rob and I decided we were going to try to have a family until the day our family was complete, that was 20 years. And God did a lot. He showed up. He showed me who he was, that he loved me, that he was real. And then he had a comma where I placed a period. Philippians 2, 12 and 13 tells us, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now that does not mean that we work out our own salvation. What it means is that we can't get in with somebody else's. Rob, Rob knowing Jesus doesn't save me, and me knowing Jesus doesn't save my kids. You work it out with God, on your own, with him, because he wants to work with you. Right? And you can be sure that he is faithful to complete the work that he's begun. And that's our point number three. God is faithful to complete the work that he has done, and it is beautiful. It doesn't always look the way we think it does. Peter thought that Jesus was going to help them defeat the Roman Empire. I thought God was going to bring physical healing. But it didn't matter that Peter was wrong. And it didn't matter that Peter screwed up. It didn't matter how many times or how big his screw-ups were. God was going to complete his work. And that same thing was true for me. It didn't matter that I put a period where God had a comma. It didn't matter that I didn't believe. It didn't matter that I felt unworthy. It didn't matter that I was stuck in judgment. It didn't matter. God had started a good work, and he was going to complete it. Peter had to keep running back to Jesus, and I had to do that too. In Japan there is an art form called kintsugi. A craftsman takes broken pieces of pottery and he puts them back together using gold as cement. And the finished product becomes stronger, more beautiful, and more valuable. God uses gold for his people. It's a sign of love and favor. So in my life, God could have healed me. He could have restored my body and given us a natural child, and that would have been a miracle. We would have all shouted, right? But instead, he looked at my brokenness and Rob's, and then through adoption, he found my four children, and he looked at their brokenness, and he took his love and used it like gold. And we became Kintsugi. And what was broken became more beautiful, stronger, and better. Peter, again, he could have, Jesus could have defeated the Roman Empire, 
but instead he defeated sin. He overcame death. He offers salvation to all of mankind for every generation to come. In our verse, Paul says, Paul wrote Philippians, and he says, I am sure. That means that he's certain. He's got confidence. He knows that God is going to complete the good work that he's begun. So where are you on your journey? Are you still trying to figure it out yourself? Or are you asking God to just fix it? Are you running to God or are you hiding from him? Have you decided to walk into God's plan and work with him? If you haven't, let's make that choice today because God wants to take you from broken to beautiful. And if you've already made that choice and you're still unsure, going back and forth between what is broken, what God might want to do, what God does want to do, and you have fear or doubt, please be sure today that our good God has a good plan and that he wants to bring you from broken to beautiful, but he wants you to work with him. So like Pastor Mike told us last week, let's get in alignment with God's plan so that we can see his transformation with peace and rest because he will bring his plan to life. He will. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word today. We declare that you are good and that you desire goodness for your people, and that our goodness flows out into the world. Our brokenness helps us identify with the brokenness out there, but our goodness declares your truth, your goodness, your love. And so I pray for our people, Lord, that we would be the church and that we would rest in your peace, that we would know your love, and that we would bring it out into a broken world so that it can be beautiful too. In Jesus' name, let's worship.